Well, I didn't want to get into the wobble box, but here I am. It's uh, a little simpler than the one on the hay barn. Uh, the knife was just clunking. It was just making a little bit too much noise and wasn't turning smooth when I turned it by hand. So I got out and I could see that the, uh, the pulley on the wobble box was going in and out just a little bit too much. So when I pulled everything apart, I'll show you the good side here. Uh, you can see there's a nice sound bearing there on the top. I think it's the top, whichever side that is. But if you look over here, you can see that one's gone. So it must have cooked off. But it looks like things are in good enough shape that I can probably get a replacement if I can figure out how to get it apart and put it in there. So that's my project for now. So here's our new bearing. Look inside there, you can see a bunch of, it's a needle bearing. It's just like a, a cup off a, a U-joint off a drive shaft, except it doesn't have a top. It's uh, open all the way through. So it's dinged on the outside here, but the inside is in good shape. Um, yeah, it's dinged on the outside a little bit, but the inside's in good shape. But I have a feeling that uh, what I'm seeing around on the inside is the, uh, the tin part of the old bearing is probably still in there. So that's going to have to come out somehow before I can press this new one in. Okay, we're done combining. Um, for anybody that's interested in uh, what's inside the wobble box that was giving us grief, uh, took me an embarrassing amount of time to get this sucker apart. Uh, well, it took a day. And uh, so the whole problem is one of these needle bearings. They're kind of like bearings you'd find on a U-joint, only they don't have a cap on them. Uh, they go inside here, and one of them had gone. So the bearings, had, the needles had all come out of it, but the metal ring on the outside was still inside here. I was hoping I could just push a new one in, but obviously with the outside of the metal ring in there, there was no way that was going to happen without that coming out. And I wasn't sure how the rest of this thing came apart. So uh, it's hardened steel, so no amount of, uh, of uh, poking or prodding or cutting or trying anything to get that thing loose was going to come out without pressing it out. It was just pressed in there too tight. So I've got this thing apart here. Uh, that goes in there like that, and there were two snap rings, one on either side holding it in. And my other big problem was, this is a huge, there's my hand, that's a big snap ring. And my snap ring pliers just simply weren't big enough to, uh, to get that thing in and out of there. And I tried all kinds of stuff. Finally, I went to town and drove to, I don't know, eight different stores looking for some snap ring pliers that would be big enough to do it and didn't have any luck so I came home and fought with it again and finally what I ended up doing was just taking an old set of needle nose pliers to the grinder and grinding it and uh, this actually worked slick as can be. I had it off in like five minutes with this. So that that's how that had to come off. I didn't, I bought the biggest snap ring pliers I could find at the store and they weren't near big enough to get that apart. So once you got uh, the snap rings off of the bearing here you could push the bearing out fairly easily. And then these here are held in place by uh, a couple of spring pins. So you pound the spring pin out on both sides. And then with this bearing out of the way, you can press these things all the way out. And once those things were pressed out into the center, this thing would come out. And then once this thing was out, uh, I could find a socket that was just the perfect size to push out the old sleeve. And at that point, I discovered that the, uh, see that just fits in there nice. That's uh, just happens to be a 7 eighths socket. It just fits in there perfect. 
I could push that old sleeve out and uh, all that screwing around, I discovered that the bearing on the other side was no good. So when I ordered that bearing, it was too late into the weekend for them to get it till Tuesday of the next week and I wasn't gonna wait. I just went out and I spent a day swathing and a day combining and I was done. So I can fix this in the off season. So I got these things apart. Uh, if you were doing this for a real long term, you'd probably want to get um, replace these things too. I don't know. These were, I don't know, about 20 bucks a piece for these guys. So that's not a real big expense. But for all this things getting used, I'm and like it doesn't spin really fast. It just kind of wobbles back and forth on that. I think that these are in good enough shape. So what I have to do is I have to press everything back together and uh, try and do it in the right order because if I push something, press something together in the wrong order, then that's going to be really annoying trying to get it all apart. So we'll uh, put, put things back together and I'll take some pictures as I go along here so you can see the process and uh, yeah, you, hopefully you won't, you won't hear me swearing at it. I'm using this press to uh, take things apart and put it together. I built this one winter just out of an old rod weeder and it's got a 20 ton bottle jack in here. Uh, I like it because it's, when I'm jacking on it, I can, you got a real good uh, feel for how much pressure you're putting on stuff. Um, you can tell if you're pushing too hard or not just by a little bit of uh, practice and feeling how much oomph you're putting into it. And uh, if I need the jack, I can pop the jack out of there and jack up the combine to change the tire or whatever. And the table is adjustable up and down. Uh, I got a little crank on there with a couple of pulleys just because it's heavy and you need all your hands to get things uh, together or apart. So that's what I'll be using to stick her back together. So I got a safety face shield on just in case something goes snap here and uh, we're just gonna push that down I just tapped it a little to start it on the hammer and it shouldn't take a whole lot of pressure to uh, push that thing in but it's just a press fit so we'll see what happens I oiled everything up and it's just going in nice and smooth here we want to make sure that it doesn't protrude out the bottom no matter what you can always push it in a little further, but getting it out might be not so much fun. I think we want it just flush. Going in nice and smooth. I have this block on here. It's a fairly smooth surface, so that I'm not taking any chances of dinging it up. So that's, I can feel the pressure, it's come down, it's tight there now. If I want it to go in any further, I'll have to press it in with that socket. But I think that's got that one done and I'll just do the same to the other side. That's pressed in there flush. We got a little bit of room at the bottom. Uh, it's a lot easier to seat it down there a little further than it is to push it back. So we're just gonna stop there for now. One nice thing about doing video for YouTube is I can always refer back to my take apart videos to see how I took something apart because a little bit of time passes, you don't always remember. So I referred back to my old pictures and uh, these were flush to the outside edge there. So that's seated just like it was when it came apart. So now these have got to go in here and they'll get pushed in. And they have to get pressed into this hole here until this groove lines up with that hole perfectly and no further. So we're going to have to keep a real close eye on that hole. And as soon as it's flush with that hole, we stop. And then we can drive in a couple of spring pins to hold everything in place. But we don't want to go too far because that's going to be a real pain if we got to pull that apart. So when I popped these out of here, I wasn't sure that they would come. I was sure hoping, because uh, I didn't know how else to get it apart. And I put, uh, put it in the press and I pushed on it and pushed on it. And uh, I was almost as hard as I wanted to push before they finally popped loose. It feels like it started. 
I don't know if you can see, it's hard to see with the camera, but I'm gonna put the, the light on the other side and watch that hole there until I get it perfectly lined up. And then I'm gonna stop pressing. You can see the setup here. And I'll do the same top and bottom. So when I was pushing, I took a punch that was the same diameter as the spring pins I knocked out, more or less, and put in there, and I could feel it resting against the pin as it was going in, and then it started to seat um, in the groove, and you could just feel it pushing on it gently, and that seemed to be a pretty good way to line stuff up. I think I'm pretty stinking close there. I'm going to try and drive in a spring pin now and see what happens. I changed out some of the furniture on my press here. I don't want to be using the spring pin as a, a pressure point on the bottom, so I'm going to have to support it from uh, from the casting. I don't want to be pushing against the spring pin, seating the other pin. So, um, yeah, we'll try this. So the pin itself is actually through the hole there, and the casting is being supported by those uh, pieces of bar. And uh, I think we got it started here. So I'll get my punch and we'll push it in, see what happens. You can see the, uh, the pin going through there. So we've kind of got a, a three quarter moon in there. So when I stick my punch in there, it won't go past that until we get down to the groove. So I can just give it a little bit of jacking until this starts to slip into the groove and then I know I'm there. It came off pretty good, but it was a little tight. Top and bottom, there was right here, you can see this silver line. There was a burr where the snap ring kind of rubs against the bearing, probably from the hammering, just hammered that up just a little bit, making it tough to get things in and out. So I'm gonna clean that up so that it goes back together better. So this has to go in there, but you can see the difficulty in pushing this thing in properly uh, because this is not straight and that's how it's supposed to be. But pushing on it is not really a good idea. So we're going to have to figure out how to get that bearing in there without pushing on the shaft any harder than we have to. So I managed to tap it down past the snap ring with uh, Brass drift. Now we gotta put the snap ring into the groove. There we go. The yeah, close up uh, tips of this thing. Not super pretty, but it only took me a minute to stick that thing in there. And I tell you, I didn't have Something like that, I'd still be fighting with it. Just ground a little bit off the tips. And the little snap ring is on this side. Use the same pliers, I think. Oh, nope, this is a different kind.
Now I just gotta stick this thing in the box and stick the box back together. It's kind of a crazy piece of machining that is. So this is the inside of this empty case. Uh, I've just popped the lid off it. There's bearing here and in there, and probably some in here. Anyways, we gotta just get this old fluid out of here and clean up the surfaces really good. There was just a super thin layer of uh, some kind of sealant used in here for gasket. So I'm just gonna use a really thin, thin layer of silicone and the same on the surface here to bolt everything back together. So we'll get the surface just cleaned up and siliconed and put the vinyl in and bolt it back together. So we're cleaned up as good as we're gonna clean it up and ready to go back together. I cleaned that out pretty good with Varsol and then uh, blew it out with air and added some 8090, that one bearing in the bottom there. Um, this seal on this side here, part of the seal, this is held together here with some of the mounting bolts that actually bolted onto the header. So I'm going to put the silicone around there, bolt it together and let it set. And then I'll have to pull those bolts out and just have the silicone hold things together while I stick this thing on the header and reattach and torque the bolts. Because that's probably the only way that's going to happen. So the sealant layer on here, the, whatever they used, was just a super thin layer, just a little bit to keep the, the oil from running out of the case there. And I'm not sure how important the clearances are, but uh, judging by how thin it was, I'll just put on the silicone as thin as I can and to get a seal, and I'll show you when I'm ready to bolt things together here. All that fuss, and that are back together here, waiting for the silicone to cure. I'll just show you what this thing does. There's a pulley that mounts on this, it turns, and the pulley that drives that shaft back and forth, just like that. <laughs> and that drives the knife that cuts the crop. There's a arm, I get it cleaned up here that fits on there with a keyway and, uh, and this goes back and forth this will drive this back and forth and that's what cut, uh, runs the sickle section that cuts the crop but as for sitting on the bench not super impressive for all of that but that's what it does and uh, won't work without it there's a wobble box A more dramatic version of what it does. Everything is just kind of stuck together a little bit. But Obviously everything needs tightened down. There's a big flywheel that uh, bolts on here too, but it's out of the way just so we can see how that all works. <laughs> 